Kingship is a military designation for Vanduul capital ships that serve as an apparent flagship of some especially large Vanduul clans. The kingship is the largest type of Vanduul capital asset encountered and is the most powerful class of known warship. Functionally, a kingship is a dreadnought, fleet carrier, command and control ship, and assault transport combined into a single hull. They are very rarely seen and have only been observed during large-scale Vanduul raids. When present, they operate with a large number of other craft, including ships of the line, support vessels, and even screens of skirmishers. Zeno anthropologists believe that the possession of a kingship is a powerful symbol of Vanduul martial culture, signifying a clan's power and strength. While the method of the kingship's construction is unclear, based on scans of the ships and evidence collected from raid sites, they seem to have been built in zero-gravity environments with the aid of advanced technology. Kingship silhouettes can differ from clan to clan, suggesting that the ships are either custom-made or modified by the clan in possession of it. Clans may add weapons, armor, modules, and other pieces to the base ship as they conduct raids and grow in martial prowess. Kingships have likely been in service for centuries, though their discovery by the United Empire of Earth, UEE, is relatively recent. The UEE first encountered a kingship on February 18th, 2712, during the Vandal invasion of the Orion system. The kingship in question surprised Orion's defenders and immediately turned the tide in the favor of the Vandal, forcing the UEE navy to retreat to the Tiber system next door. The Vandal did not continue their raid beyond Orion, Instead, the attacking clan kept the ship in question in orbit of the former human colony for over a year as it gathered resources. On July 7th, 2884, a clan led by a kingship slipped past the Caliban system sensor beacons and sparked the fall of Caliban, resulting in both the loss of the system and the UEE's 88th Logistic Support Squadron. The kingship returned and re-entered Vandul space shortly after the end of the battle. In 2940, the UEE Navy severely damaged a kingship as part of Operation Unilateral Force, a covert military operation that intended to weaken a single Vandul clan and inspire infighting in the hope that it would distract them from raiding human colonies. Though the overall operation failed to have an expected impact, the 78th Squadron succeeded in inflicting heavy damage on a kingship. A kingship did not appear in human space again until October 5, 2945. In the Battle of Vega II, the Navy's second fleet, led by Admiral Ernst Bishop, engaged the kingship and the remaining clan. After a fierce battle, the UES Gauntlet charged the weakened kingship and rammed it both the gauntlet and the kingship were destroyed, making the first time human forces have successfully downed a Vanduul kingship. The sheer mass, firepower, and mystery surrounding kingships has made them an object of extreme interest in the UEE. Due to their presence at key Vanduul invasions of human space, they have become symbolic of the extreme nature of the Vanduul threat. Human politicians frequently cite the threat of kingships as justification for increased military spending. This has been a reading of the Galactopedia article of the Vandal Kingship. This was put out in February 2024. And uh, if you're new to these type of videos, uh, first of all, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you to the subscribers who have been around that know this already. But uh, <laughs> I wanted to mention that um, I tend to do lore videos as kind of an act of love. I know they're not the most popular thing, but I, I think this video is going to be pretty fun for people. And I tried to add some energy to it. The Vandal Kingship is something they're very cagey about. And they, being CIG's lore team, they don't want to tip their cards completely if this thing is going to turn up in one of the three Squadron 42 parts. Um, and that's kind of where I think a lot of this is interesting. I wanted to note that as the dates get more recent and more recent, uh, there's not exact dates. Like, for example, Operation Unilateral Force just happened in 2940. <laughs> It doesn't note like July 5th, 2940, like as if the um, the ones that were from Fall Caliban and uh, the, the, the Orion system invasion, which are more historical. Um, so it is interesting to note that it's just some little things. 
Um, for those who are keeping track at home, if you're listening to this in, in, in 2024, uh, we're in 2954, I believe, right now. Uh, so I hope I got that right. Uh, we recently had our new year and uh, uh, switched over. <laughs> and um, I, I think in general, the, uh, the way things are going for lore is going to be very exciting very soon. We're going to have a fire hose of lore content, I think, after Squadron 42 Part 1 has kind of kicked out the door and is launched um, in, 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 in all its glory. Um, we'll have a lot of some question marks that they seem to dance around with these lore videos uh, and, and sorry, discussions and private writings. As a reminder, this is written, and the link to the vid article, as always, is in the description. So these come from jump points, or in this case, it came directly from a Galactopedia, but a lot of times they're like a jump point that gets republished as a com link on the front page of robertspaceindustries.com. Uh, there are plenty there, and uh, if you subscribe, you can check out the jump points directly and kind of get a hint of what's coming. Sometimes they're curated because uh, they're put up or updated on the Galactopedia now, uh, which is the latest way they kind of do this, on stuff that's coming up quickly, uh, stuff that might be interesting, something that's going to be part of a new event. And then other times it's just it has to get done. So there's a whole backlog of content that needs to be addressed or needs to be updated, modernized, etc., and the Vandal Kingship's a very, very old concept. We've seen it in the trailers for Squadron 42 and such uh, for a while. Um, so it'll be interesting to see just how much it plays a part, or is it just going to be like, you know, in the background hinting at it and, um, you know, how, what, what that'll look like. I have, you know, we'll see. But um, I'm focusing specifically on the Kingship itself. It is a, as pointed out, it is the most powerful uh, ship and uh, if you're wondering, doesn't the UEE Navy also have its own equivalent dreadnought-type ship? And the answer is the Retribution. We have a single one of those that is defending a capital-class uh, capital system. And it's extremely hard to move that dang thing around, and um, it's extremely risky to kind of put it into battle. It's more of a defensive asset. Uh, there's debates about whether or not it... it in, in the community, we debate about whether or not it's going to become a plot point to be destroyed or attacked or, 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 or the bad, you know, Vandul or somebody convinced by the Vandul to work for them will try to use it against us. And then that's a plot point to try to disable it. So then the humans can take it back. The UE Navy can take it back and uh, make it work. But for now, um, it is it is the most powerful thing that the UE Navy has. But really... What the bread and butter of the UE Navy is, is what we've actually seen in some of the content uh, for Star Citizen, and that would be the Bengal clack carriers, the Javelin class destroyers, and your Idris M's. So these tend to be like the core of the fleet. And then, of course, the, fam the famous well regarded Hornets, like your F 8As and your F 7As. Um, are kind of your backbone of the fleet. Then you have your gladiator bombers uh, that are coming out of these ships. And we're talking about large amounts of these things. So even though the Van Duel may have their kingship, their precious kingship, and some pretty other interesting things too. I should do a video on the driller, which is something, uh, shout out to you, Spectre. You're a big fan of that one. Um, which is like their equivalent of a Polaris, basically, in, in the Van Duel uh, world. It's a very powerful ship. It's very scary. Uh, if you read it, <laughs> Until it gets modernized, we'll see how it actually looks in game. But the driller is actually pretty nasty too. That's like one of their ships of the line, I guess you would call it. I'm gonna be careful. I don't want to get, uh, I don't want to get in invoke too much anger of the uh, the lore experts in the in the in the comments here. But um, in general, the Vandal King ship I think is going to uh, be one of the more interesting ships I hope to see, and I hope to see it at some point in the PU. Um, it, it is going to be very difficult for them to have something in there, but it seems to me that would be a, an amazing experience to have a CDF force of massive amount of players when the player caps of the servers are much higher and uh, being able to work together to take down these larger ships. And it really shows and shines a light on capital class vessels and all their support vessels that make their job possible because we're going to need every jab we've got. We're going to need every... Bengal that, that players or NPCs are running. So players can take a Bengal, convert it like an org, and uh, bring it to the bring it to the fight. Uh, they can never truly own it, so to speak, but they can hold it for a bit. Um, 
Polarises and Idrises of all types, you know, being able to use those massive weaponries they have. Perseus is, is another good example. It's not just about the size of the weaponry. It's this fact that these ships have sustainment. They can take a hit or two and they can still keep on ticking. They can also have PD, most of them have PDS type weaponry to defend themselves from incoming torpedoes and missile attacks and such. So when their screening vessels start faltering, they still stand a chance out there. They can stay on the field a little longer and slug it out a little longer. And they have the ammunition to keep their main high, large size weaponry going longer. And the Perseus, for example, with its size 7 guns, the uh, Idrises with their, with their size 10 hammering away off the front of the spinal mount. A javelin of every size imaginable, and also, on top of that, it's size 12 uh, twerps. And of course, the size 10 weapons of the Polaris. And that is not downgrading the tally with its size 9s, eclipses with their size 9s and such. But when we start talking about things like the Vandal Kingship, these are vessels that are going to need sustained damage. Things that are on the grid just hammering away at this. And big ships that can take a big hit once in a while. It'll be interesting to see how it goes. But at the end of the day, I, I think um, these ships have their moment. And uh, it's going to be exciting times ahead when we finally get to see one. And lure like this makes the world much more exciting. Uh, and it also every little hint that we can see of what the Vandal are up to certainly makes it that much more exciting when you have a mysterious group like this that we can kind of slowly understand a little bit more and uncover their secrets. And maybe the Banu, mer the Banu merchantmen that are sneaking over there to, 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 to trade with them. Those dang solis uh, from the Banu that are willing to trade with the Vandal, at least if rumors are to be believed, in other lore. <laughs> When I saw them talking about it, using advanced technology to construct their kingships, I was like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And what did the Banu sell you? What gantries did the Banu sell you to make this thing happen? <laughs> that was my speculation. <laughs> but I thought I'd just throw that in. Um, I, You know, uh, throughout these, when I read them, I kind of have to script them a little bit and think about how I'm going to do it. And I try to keep them as honest as possible, keep the names the same. Um, you know, if it's a if it's a specific kind of character um, notation of like what kind of person they are or what they feel or, you know, which race they are, if they're, you know, even if they're Tavaran or Sheehan or, or Banu with some of these stories, we have those. But, um, one of the things I do go through is I have to check my own little thoughts and I'm like, you know what though, in my commentary, I'm going to mention that because <laughs> it's like, um, the, the, these, uh, these Van Duel, um, they're opera running around with spears and metal armor sets from like, you know, that look old and such. And now you're telling me they're building the largest capital ships in the history of the world uh, of the verse. Like somebody's helping them <laughs> or there's a smarter, um, there's a smarter mind at play that they operate from. It's just too weird that a that tribal groups like this are building such things that these alien tribal groups, you know, that, that, that operate, unless we're only seeing raiding parties from some of the smaller groups. It could very well be that there's an incredibly organized, you know, Vandal, like a, like a nation state of uh, the Vandal. Me speculating, I'm going a little too far in the weeds here. But yeah, um, it'll be interesting to see. And, uh, and, and certainly fight them, because uh, I think I have a ball doing that. All right, have a good one.